Liza Baraswanda Barushaka. Liza Brunda Raswanda Barusha Handa. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Majesty. Majesty. Your grace has found me. La Zobranda Raswana Barushaka. Thank you so much for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let me know who joined. You're welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Please leave a comment. Let me know who just joined us. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, better life in your hands. We are singing majesty. We are singing majesty. Forever, I am changed by your world. Chaze, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. So glad to have you join us today. You're welcome. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hands. We are singing majesty. We're singing majesty. Forever I am changed by your word. In the presence of your majesty. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do comment. Let me know. Oh, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Oh, my God. You are so sweet. I'm, I'm blushing. <laughs> thank you so much. So glad to have you join us today. So glad. Where are you joining us from? Please come in. Let me know where you're joining us from. Come on, beautiful people. Leave a comment as you join us. Let me know who is joining us today. Please do that for me. Please do that. Where are you joining us from? This is my... Oh, Lini. Thank you for joining us, Lini. How are you doing? I trust God you are doing good. Wow, from England. Oh my God, I've been having few, quite a number of people join me from England lately. So glad to have you join us today. You're welcome. Welcome to Purpose and Marital Bliss. Oh, just begin to thank God. Just begin to worship God. Exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just begin to, to talk to him. Always a pleasure having you join us, Lene. Always a pleasure. La zobara suhanda baru shahanda balada rasiana. Liza branda rasuana baru shakaliara sobrahanda lada rasiana. Kayana balaru shakaliara sobrahanda. Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you for today, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this session. We thank you for each and every one joining us today. Thank you for those that you designated to be here today. Oh, Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Be thou exalted in our midst, O God. Kabara suana baru shakaliara sobrahanda. Kayana balaru shakaliara siana baru zabrahanda la rasiana. 
Kaliza Barusha Handa Balarasiana. Father, thank you because the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. The expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. The expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. Thank you for your manifest presence in our midst. Lisa Brunda Raswana, thank you so much for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let me know who joined us. Kaya Zobranda Larusha Kalia Rasiana. Kabarasiana Barusha Kalia Rasiana. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Father, we acknowledge your presence in our midst. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Elsa, thank you for joining us, Elsa. So glad to have you join us today. You're welcome, Elsa. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Oh, someone just talk to God, say, Father, thank you for this session. Lord, I make this prayer, do not pass me by. Father, in this session, do not pass me by. Give me, Lord, a word for me. Lord, speak to me. Minister to me. Just make that a prayer. Say, Father, minister to me in this session. Lord, speak to me in this session. Father, do not pass me by. Lord, do not pass me by. Nisha, you're welcome. So glad to have you join us. Always a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love it when you say that. You make me blush. <laughs> thank you, Nisha. Kayana bara sobranda la rushaka, Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We give you all the honor. La zobara siyana barushaka. Father, we thank you for each and every one that you are adding to us today. Thank you for those joining us today. Thank you for those joining us for the first time. Thank you. Father, let every word spoken here be spirit and life. By reason of your word, Lord, minister to someone. Change somebody's life. Minister to somebody, Lord. Change somebody's life. Make somebody's life better. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Oh, today. We have been looking at the different dimensions of God. And yesterday the, the, the internet was really so poor that we had to we, we had to stop our session prematurely. And by the first day we saw God being our father. And I was telling us what a joy it is to know that the monarch of the universe is your father. And, the, and I was telling us there are some of these things that we, 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 we've been saying, but we don't have the full understanding. We don't have the full understanding of what it means. You know what it means to have the creator of the universe being your father? What it means to have the monarch of the universe being your father? The one who created everything that is seen and unseen. How can your life remain the same? How can you be miserable? How can your life be so miserable that you are crying every day and you go to, how can, how can you go to your father? Oh, Kathy, go Kathy. Thank you for joining us. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. We are so glad to have you join us today. You're welcome. Don't worry. You, you didn't make a mistake joining us today. I believe the spirit of God led you here today for a purpose. 
So I was telling, how can you feel like all hope is lost? When they when, when, when our heavenly father, oh, and, and I was sharing with the people who were there, the reason why God says, Jesus teaching us how to pray, he says, when you are praying, he was giving us the manner, the pattern to pray. He says, start by saying our father. It is um, our who art in heaven. He, it is acknowledging acknowledging the fact that you have a father that is far above the limitations of your earthly fathers. Our earthly fathers, when they know that their children are in need, good, good fathers, God-fearing God fathers, not the types, you know, fatherhood is not in, in, in the ability to deposit sperms, right? Fatherhood is in the ability to actually take care of the child and bring up a child in, in, in the way to take care of your responsibilities in bringing up that child. So every real father, earthly father, despite their limitations, despite their struggles, despite their hard times, but when they know that their child needs something, they will stretch themselves. They will walk under the sun or under the rain to make sure that your child goes through, the, has, has what they desire, to make sure that they provide for their child what they desire. Despite their limitations, but Jesus teaches us that this one, we have another father who is in heaven, far above the limitations of the earthly fathers, far above the shortcomings of the earthly fathers and that may, gave me such a consolation to know that when my, my my physical father has limitations i have another father who can go beyond those limitations i have another father that is ready to go to take me to hold me by the hands he's ready to lift me up when i fall he's ready to hold me by the hand when i'm going through the valley of the shadow of death he is there with me he gives me the assurance while my earthly father is crying the same way i'm crying crying and all of us are in the, in the same mess. No, no, my, my heavenly father tells me when I go through the fire, he is there with me. When I go through the water, he is there with me to ensure that the fire doesn't consume me and the water doesn't drown me. So though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because he is with me. He says, oh, David speaking, he says from the time. Wow, yesterday. It's just yesterday that you saw me. That's a divine encounter. Oh, amen, 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 amen. I'm so glad. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're so, you're, you're so nice. Thank you. You're, you're what this channel has been, who this channel has been waiting for. I'm already so glad having you. Osha, thank you for joining us. You're welcome, Osha. I'm already glad having you join us today, Kate, Katie. I'm already glad having you join us today. So I was saying, isn't it amazing that you have someone you can run to? And I was giving the example of my little girl who is just four years old. When she's bragging about her father, she doesn't know her father has difficulties. She doesn't know her father needs milk. When she's making a demand for what she needs to eat, she doesn't consider there is a possibility her father might not have. No, she knows that daddy has everything that I need. When she goes out and if she goes out and looks for trouble and someone wants to beat, she tells them, I'm going to tell my daddy. It doesn't occur to her that that person may be stronger than daddy. And that's and, and, and it felt so good to know that you have a daddy that is truly indeed richer than you even think. Like, like, like this, this my little daughter, she would say all these things, but she can come and place a demand on her father and her father is short of cash. She can place a demand, she can go bring a man that has been doing bodybuilding for the past five years and, and, my, and, and her father cannot beat them up. But we have a heavenly father that is above the limitations of the earthly father. The heavenly father that doesn't lack anything. He is all powerful. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is all everything. He says the gold the gold is his and the silver is his. A thousand cattle on the hillside belongs to him. He's the one that even gives us the ability to make wealth. He's the one that gives that blesses us and, and, and his blessings are there no sorrow to it. So we have a heavenly father that is far, that, that doesn't have the the limitations of our earthly father. Oh, Sherry Johnson, so glad I've been looking for you. Like, where's Sherry today? Where's Sherry? So glad to have you join us. And I said, this should change your prayers. The reason why you pray, but you, have, you don't have the, the, the corresponding faith to, to bring to pass, to, to take what you prayed for, to, to receive what you prayed for, is because you are not conscious of the fact that God is your heavenly father. You are not conscious of the fact that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all. Yeah, I, I started late, just 
Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I know you 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 start you are, you are coming late. I I came later. <laughs> I came thirty minutes late. You came to fourteen minutes late. So yeah, I I came later than you. So if you go to God in prayers, and you know that this Father you have, the God you are praying, you are not praying to the Old Testament knew Him as the All Sovereign God. As the almighty God, as the one who is ready to judge them when they fail. But he, but he introduced us, he gave us the privilege to call, to become his children. That's the reason why Jesus came. He didn't just come to restore us back to the Father. No, he came to make sure that we are adopted to become his children. And we have such a good father that he doesn't, he doesn't discriminate. So if you go to him, say, Father, I need to get married. Lord, I'm trusting you. So, so it's, you are not just talking to a sovereign God that can answer your prayers. No, you are talking to your father. The father who looked at Adam and said, it is not good for this, my son, to be alone. I will make for him a helper. The problem is that we go to him like he's a go-to, like he's a destiny helper. He, he can choose to help you, but he can choose not to. No, the, your father already is thinking well of you. Your father already has good plans for you. Your father already wants to see you happy. He, he wants to see you satisfied. He wants to see you joyous. He wants to see you being comfortable. He wants everything. So before you even think, Thing. The Bible says it is him that causes us to will and to do. It is him that causes us to will and to do. It is him that causes us to will and to do. It means before you even start feeling like you want to get married, it is him that puts the desire in the inside of you. And he is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you desire. So do you then think that the father who can do everything will then put the desire in you just to keep you stranded? I don't think so. Not the father that we have. We have a heavenly father that is worth bragging about. Oh, you, you can go watch our, our, our video two days ago. You, you, you get the full teaching. I just wanted to. And yesterday we were talking about him being our friend. Being our friend. And I was telling us, say, if you, if you consider, like, I, 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 I confide in my father. When the going is tough, I run to my dad. When I'm in a mess, I run to my dad. But yesterday I said there is another dimension of him not just being your father, him being your friend. There are some things that I have, some things that are happening in my life. I don't feel that comfortable sharing them with my father. But I'm very comfortable to share them with my bestie. I'm very comfortable to share them with a friend that I trust. So, when the, so I have a friend that knows practically everything that is happening in my life. Things that, I, that my father is not aware of, but my friend knows. Come on, my, my husband is my best friend. I tell ex absolutely everything. I share it with him. And I have another friend now besides my husband who knows most of, almost everything I'm going through. The good, the bad, and the ugly, I share it with him. But my, my father, talking about my biological father. So God is saying, in case, in case you are not that comfortable being with him to tell him everything as a father if the father-son relationship because there are times that you get of age and then you start dating and you're and, you, and you're hiding it you don't want your parents to know you're dating you don't want your parents but, but you've got to still go to your father so if you can't tell him as your father he says there's another dimension come to him as a friend he is there as a friend and and i thought of the easiest way to walk in the prophetic is for is to get to the level where you become a friend of god is to get to the level where you become a friend of God. Then there is nothing. Your friend will not know that the enemy is planning evil against your back and doesn't tell you about it. They will tell you. When they hear someone gossiping about you, they bring the news straight to you. Sometimes I've had my friends have to fight. They, 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 they fight for me and they defend me behind my back without me even knowing it. So when God is your friend, Oh, the, the Bible says God talking to Abraham. He is on a mission. He has every right to, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But then he stands and he asks himself, he says, is it okay for me to do what I'm about to do without telling my friend Abraham? So he didn't tell Abraham on the, pla on, on the platform of, of Abraham being the father of faith. He didn't tell Abraham on the platform of Abraham 
be, be, being a, a man of God. No, it was on the platform of friendship. Like, is it okay? He says, Abraham, is, he has this great call. He's going to be a great man. And, he's, and, and above all, he's my friend. So should I do this thing without telling Abraham my friend? And then he told Abraham and gave Abraham the opportunity to intercede. And that's how at the end of the day, lots was saved. It means if you are a friend of God, you automatically become an intercessor because God can hear you. There are some things that if anyone tells me about, I will not listen to. But when my friend comes and tells me, please consider, please don't be too hard on them. Please reconsider. I will hear it because a friend told me that. Kayana Bararaswana. Wow. Wow. Wow, Elsa, really? <laughs> God just told you there's a place you need to go. <laughs> it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. It's a reminder. He is your father. Heavenly father for that matter. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Really? That's amazing. I'm loving these confirmations. That's to let us know that we are not just here. God sends us here and then he sends you here for a particular... That's why I said is if you are here, it's not a coincidence. It's not a mistake. No, you are here for a purpose. And maybe I should try to wrap up yesterday we were in our our session on becoming a friend of god was interrupted let's try to wrap that up before before we get to the next level before we get to the word to to, to, to the other word if, if not also with moses oh Osha, you're already preaching we're we are already preaching this together in exodus chapter 33 verse 11 God talking to Moses, he says, he, he talks to Moses face to face as a man talks to his friend. As a man talks to his friend. When you are a friend of God, he talks to you face to face. What, that, that's what sets you apart from others. Because Miriam and, and Aaron were talking like, are we not also prophets? Don't we also hear God? We also hear God. God talks to us. God also tells us things. And God comes to tell them, say, please excuse me. To you, I talk to you in dreams and visions. He says, but to my servant Moses, I talk to him face to face as a man talks to his friend. And, and because of that, Moses had, the, oh, Mo Moses called God to his senses. God wanted to make a decision and God says, and, and Moses tells God, think about this. Say, so don't you think if you do this, they are going to say you took your people out of Egypt and then you were not even able to take them to the promised land and you were able to, and, and you killed them all in the wilderness. Think about it. What would people say? And the, and the Bible says, God, God thought about it and was like, you are right. You are right. I repent of what I wanted to do. When you, you, you have a platform to negotiate with God, you have a platform for negotiation when God is your friend. You have a platform for, to intercede for others when God is your friend. You have a platform to call God to his senses, to tell God this thing you are doing is not right. Don't you think you, you should have done this? Do you really like what this is, what is happening right here? So sometimes it is okay, it is good, it is wonderful to know that you have a heavenly father. But it's better to, to know that he is your friend. I can tell God when I got this revelation, I talked to God about everything. I tell him about everything. I put him first before I even get to tell my husband who is my best friend. I, I, I already talked to God about it. Because there are some things that I go through and I don't want to tell my husband because I don't want to break his faith. I don't want to tell him because I want him to be strong for me. I don't want to break him. So I've got to look for a way to pray myself out of that situation before I tell him now, giving him as a testimony. But I have a friend that I tell them anything I'm going through. I have a heavenly father who is also my friend. So I can tell, I can run to him every point at every point in time. I can tell him I'm hooked. I can tell him I messed up. I can tell him I, I, I need this. Sometimes I go to him and I cry, say, please take my husband out of this. Come on, come on, say, if you truly love me and, and you truly am your friend the way you say it, then you can't just sit there and watch my husband go through this. Say, please do this for me. And there is something about friendhood, about friendship. There is something about friendship. 
genuine friendship seeks your good every point in time. Every time your friend sees a good opportunity, they think of you. They have a good opportunity for themselves. They think of how they can get you involved. God says, Let's let's go back to one of the scriptures that we read yesterday. Genesis chapter nine, chapter eighteen. Genesis chapter eighteen. From verse 17 to verse 19, I believe. Is my moderator there? Genesis 18. Yeah, Osha, do that always. Do that always. If I'm angry, I'm angry in the presence. If, if, if I'm happy, I'm happy in the presence. If I'm sad, I'm sad in the presence. Before every other person ever discovers the emotions of what I'm going through, I've first of all talk, I've spoken to him. So sometimes I could sit here and I'm dying in silence without you knowing. But before you know, before the first person even knows, sometimes before my husband knows I had to deal with this, I had already dealt with it and, 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 and my father and friend already dealt with it on my behalf. Genesis 18 from verse 17, I believe. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham, my friend and servant, what I am going to do? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed through him, and shall bless themselves by him. For I have known, chosen, acknowledge him as my own. And the word that is used here as known is still the same word, to be intimately connected. It's still the same known. We saw this some, some weeks ago, last week or two weeks ago. God telling us that before, telling uh, Jeremiah, say, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I was saying the no that is used there is the same no that is found in Genesis chapter 4. That, that says, Adam knew his wife. Which is, which is talking about intimacy, which is talking about intercourse, which is talking about to be intimately related, to be intimately. So God says, I know him. I know him. I know Abraham. I know him. And that is the, that, that is, that is the foundation of friendship. Who you call your friend is someone that knows you. They know deep things about you. They know, they know you intimately. So in other words, God is saying, for I know him intimately. I am intimately related to him. I am intimately connected to him. And I told us back then that the same word that God told Jeremiah in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. It means in other words, he says, I ordained you to become a... I set you apart and ordained you to become a, 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 to, to become a prophet. To the nations. So it means in other words. God was, God was telling him that I am. I Before you were in your mother's womb. I was intimately related to you. I knew you intimately. I was intimately connected to you. Intimately related to you. So everything I am doing for you right now. And everything I am doing with you. And through you. And in you. Is based on the, intim or on the platform on, of intimacy. Is based on the platform of intimacy. How in on, 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 on the platform of the intimate relationship I have with you. And you go to Jeremiah 29 and he says, I know the plans I have for you. And it's still the same no. He says, I am intimately connected to the plans I have for you. The plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I don't care what the devil told you. But the plan, God is intimately connected to you. God, God's plans to make to prosper you are intimately, are, are intimate. It's not, it's not a coincidence it's not just something that is happening no it's coming from the place of intimacy so you have more reason to succeed than reason to fail the reason for you to succeed is older than reason for you to fail cc thank you for joining us you're welcome 
The reason for you to succeed is older than reason for you to fail. The reason for me to succeed, the reason why I must succeed, why I must prosper, why every good thing should come to me, why my expected end will come to pass, is because I have a friend that is intimately connected to me. But this one is not an ordinary friend. They have what it takes to bring to pass what they desire for my life. They what have they have what it takes to bring to pass my the plans to prosper me. They have what it takes. So my friend is not one friend that can just give promises and fail. No, I have a friend that says what they mean. That, that, that's me almost stepping into my next teaching, into, into, into my next dimension, which is the word. I thought we were going to deal with this, but I just realized we didn't finish yesterday's session. I have a friend that has what it takes to change my life. I have a friend that has what it takes. And, and, and the plans, they have plans for me. Their plans for me are intimately related. And their plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Their plans for me are coming from a place of intimacy. Their plans for me are coming from a deep place of love. Their plans for me are coming from a deep place of, 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 of intercourse, of intimacy. Come on, I, I, I know we are adults here. When, when, when after intimacy, after intercourse, there is nothing you ask your husband. When, when, when your husband has had a good... Should the woman of God get carnal? <laughs> this is purpose and marital bliss. You should have known what to expect when you get to my channel. Come on, when your husband is really satisfied in bed, and they are really happy with you, it's a good time to place a demand. It's a good time to place a demand. Because it will take a, a wicked husband to say no. It will take a wicked husband to say no to your demand. Especially if it is within their means. So what more of this one that we have? This friend that you have. That loves you so much. That thinks so well of you. And then the good thing is that he can bring to pass anything. He can fulfill all your desires. He can give you everything you want. Is it a kingdom spouse? Is it marriage? Is it, is it finances? Is it health? Is it healing? He can do it. He is everything that you ever wanted. Everything that you ever wanted is hidden in him. He can, do, he can give you all that you need. You have a friend. Who doesn't just think well of you, but can bring to pass everything that they thought. A friend that can bring to pass all that they talked about. Kayana bara sobranda la rushaka. Lizu bara siana. God says, I know Abraham. I am intimately related to Abraham. So the friendship, this friendship is not the kind that the day they ask for your, for your help and you don't help them, they walk out on you. This friendship is not the kind that you can, I can easily walk out on him because he disobeyed me. This friendship is not the kind that I can easily walk out on him because I am dissatisfied, because they couldn't meet my request, because they didn't spend time with me. When they don't visit me, I decide to pass through their door, hoping that they will see me pass and they'll call me to their house. When they don't come for fellowship, I will come in the cool of the day and fellowship with them. That's the kind of intimate friendship that we are talking about. That's the kind of bestie you have in God. Jesus talking in John chapter 15 which was our main scripture yesterday. John chapter 15, from verse 15 to verse 17, I believe. He says, I no longer call you guys servants. He says, because a servant doesn't know what, what the master does, everything the master does. He says, I call you friends because I have revealed to you everything that I learned from my father. Friendship talks about knowledge. Friendship talks about intimacy. It talks about knowledge. How much do you know of God? How much do you know of God? How much do you know of God? So how can you become a friend of God? How can you become a friend of God? In that John chapter 15, he starts by saying, if, he starts by saying you will become my friends if you obey my commands. If you obey my commands. So when, when you align yourself to the will of God and you obey God's instructions, you are on a highway to becoming the friend, a friend of God. You are on a highway to becoming a friend of God. When God can tell you, please do this for me, and you do it without grumbling. When God can tell you, please, spend more time with me. Give me more time in fellowship. 
and you say, God, because you said it. I, I might have been busy all this while, but because you said it. Oh, Pastor Rui, so glad to have you join us, Pastor. I missed you yesterday. So glad. Oh, my God. I just remember, Pastor Rich, I dreamt about you. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. I, I, I don't dream that way often. But I dreamt about you. And funny enough, I dreamt that it was your birthday. Family, just, 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 just let me just give some more attention. I, I, as I saw him, I just remembered. Pastor Rich, I dreamt that it was your birthday. I called you on phone, prayed for you, and then I said again that it was not enough. I took a flight, paid you a visit, entered your house. <laughs> Did you hear what happened to me this morning? I really don't understand what God was saying. And I entered the house and there was food in the pot. And you didn't bother to, to dish food for me. You, you, have, you just told me to feel free. And I went to the pot and I got my food myself and I... And I enjoyed myself. I had a good time. I, <laughs> I got up and I was like, God, this is the first member of the family that I'm actually dreaming about. It's funny. I just remembered that when I saw you. When is your birthday, sir? So that I know I'm trying to still understand what God was talking about. <laughs> No, it's okay. Don't be sorry. Let's come back to business. Well, January 31st. My birthday is on January 30th. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. We almost. Maybe it's even due to the difference in time we would have had the same birthday. Oh, that's, that's a good detail. Okay, family, let's get back to business. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, a, that's an awesome coincidence. My birthday is on January 30th. Oh my God, and it's coming. The woman is getting more and older and older every, every year. The years are fast passing by. Let's go back to our friendship. <laughs> Let's go back to our friendship talk. Where was I? I was talking about obedience. Obedience. Really awesome. Oh, thank you, Nisha. That's so nice of you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Nisha. So, obedience. Come on, we don't, you don't like to hang around someone who doesn't hear you. When you have someone like your friend and then every time you tell them, say, please, I don't like you doing this. They go ahead and they still do the, the same thing. You tell them, please, I don't like it. When you do this, it hurts me. And they keep doing it. It's the same. Sometimes we spiritualize things because we, because we are dealing with it. Oh, Carla, thank you so much for joining us. I tell you, one day apart, that's, maybe that's the detail. That's what God wanted me to know. Oh, Tiffany, so glad to have you join us today. Oh, Monica, you're welcome. Monica, I just discovered something. Pastor Rich and I have almost the same birthday. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's continue back to business. We don't have time. We are going to have one of these days to just chat and just discuss. Would you like that? To just have a good time, just discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. That's why I'm fond of Pastor Rich. From the first time I met him. Oh, that's why. That's why. That's why. <laughs> From the first time I met him, there's, there's been something special about him. And please don't be jealous. About you too, there's something special about you. You are not left out. <laughs> So sometimes we take spirituality and we take our work with God to be so spiritual that we miss out on understanding the basics of it. It's not that complicated. A friend that doesn't spend time with you, is that one a friend? 
Even when your friend travels, you talk practically every day. So this one that you go for one week, two weeks without talking to your friend, is he truly your friend? And sometimes he wakes you up at night and he tells you, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. I want to have a date with you. I want us to go out. I just want to have some koinonia, some intimacy, some good time, some alone time with you. And you are like, I'm tired. And you are like, I'm too busy. No, that, that's to tell you that, is, that that's not your friend. So that leads us to the second thing. The first thing is obedience. Obedience. Your friends should be able to hear what, 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 what you tell them and obey. They should be able to know your likes and dislikes and, and align to it. That's what sets them apart from every other person. So when other people are doing some other things, Dora, Dora Bell, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So when other people are treated, are doing some other things, you know if it was your friend, they, would, they couldn't have done this to you. Because you know they know you well. They know your likes and dislikes. They know what to do what. When to do what, sorry. The second thing is worship and fellowship. It's seeking him. Seeking him. The other day we saw a scripture. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17. And God says, I, I, I love those who love me. He says, but there is a category of people that I don't just love them. He says, but I go to meet those who seek me diligently and early. Those who seek me diligently and early. Those who know what it means to spend time with me. Those who know what it means to visit me. Those who know that I need them around and they are always there. Those who know, God says, there is a, I love everybody. As a matter of fact, if all you do is love God, then you are limited to the general love that he has. The, the, he loved us when we were yet sinners. When we were yet sinners, the love that he had, so, he so loved the world. So if, if, if you remain at love, you are in that category. He loves you right back. But there's another category that in the cool of the day, God will come to meet them. Come on, the Bible says God was passing in front of Abraham's house. And Abraham, knowing the kind of friend that he had, he saw them and he knew that this was God. He knew these three people were not actual. He could see. How could he identify? Because he has been spending time with him. That's where he revealed all the secrets. That's where Jesus says, he says, he says, it's only a friend that knows everything about him. He says, it's only a friend. He says, I no more call you servant because the servant doesn't know anything about the master. The servant, he says, he says, I call you friend because I've told you everything. The reason why he could tell them everything is because they spent time with him. They were together with him all the times. They were together with him 24-7. They were together with him. In the afternoon, they are talking to him. At night, they are talking to him. When God taught me this, I learned how to. Yes, it's good to have a prayer time, but it's better to have a prayer habit. When I'm going to the market, I'm talking to him. As I'm doing the dishes, I'm talking to him. As I'm doing, as I'm taking care of the baby, I'm talking to him. Or sometimes my, 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 my little boy is, is tired. Sometimes he just looks at me and he stares at me because I, I, as, I, as I'm just getting him to sleep, I'm speaking in tongues. I just begin to talk to him. As I'm sitting and yesterday I was just uploading my channel. I was just uploading a, a video on my channel. Pastor Rich, I don't know if you've noticed. I was just uploading a video, but the channel is beginning to pop up. My channel is beginning to have visibility. Things are beginning to turn around the subscribers. Come on, how many young people are, do I have here? Things that the prayers you have been praying and trusting God for for long, Pastor Rich. God is beginning to answer. So as I was just, uh, my, my, the list of my videos is having at least a hundred views. And that used to be mega breakthrough. Where, where would I even see a hundred views? Where would I even see a hundred views? I used to have just Pastor Rich in my live session. How can I forget Pastor Rich? I used to have just Pastor Rich in my live session on good days. I, at some point, I, I, I told him, I, I, I said, please bring your wife. Bring your, I, it's not like I really love your wife. I, <laughs> Monica, now I love you. But when I was saying that, I just needed three people. At least let it be P. Oh, God, where is Period Sire? Let it be at least Pastor Rich, Period Sire, and Monica. <laughs> God has been faithful. If only you are diligent. If only you are diligent. That's why it says diligently seek him. Those who diligently seek him. You remember when I was crying and trusting God to reach 2K subscribers? Guess what? I'm, I'm almost there. I'm at 1.94 subscribers. So I'm almost getting there. I'm trusting God before this week comes to an end. I would cross the 2K. Yes, that it, it comes with diligence. 
There was a time, if only you are there in his presence, if only you are diligent, that's when he comes and he begins to download his secrets to you. That's when he comes and he begins to tell you the deep things. That's when he comes and he begins to tell you about himself. And he begins to tell you about the plans that he has for you. Some of us are so lost, we don't even know what to do. You are at the point where you don't know. My prodigal left me. Does God want me to go back? Does God have a better plan for me? Is it God that took him away from me or took me away from him? What is actually going up? going on with my life but you know what your best friend has that he, he has all the answers you desire but the problem is that you don't spend time with him and i came to realize that as the, god, god knows all the answers he is all knowing he has everything i ever need and the bible says your father who is in heaven knows that you need all these things the mistakes that we make most of the time is that we go to him and then we tell him we talk and talk and talk and when he's like okay finally i i, I got you in my presence you are finished talking and then you left the presence and it's like but i'm still about to give you the idea you just pray for financial breakthrough and i have here with me the idea that will take you out of poverty but then you just talked and talked i i came to realize there is nothing i have to tell god that is more important than one thing that god has to tell me so my prayers changed i would rather just worship him just seek him he knows what I'm going through. I would rather just seek him because sometimes I realize at some point like wow presence of the Lord is heavy. Oh, I love oh, Katia, Kat I already love you. <laughs> you are telling me very nice things that I want to hear. I already love you. You already have a part in <laughs> Let me shift Monica and Pastor Rich. I've been loving them too much. And Sherry Johnson, I, I, I fit you right here. Every other person I've been loving too much. Let, let, let me make a spot for Katie. <laughs> so when you spend time, he begins to tell you. So I realized when I go to God, the first thing is not to start telling him the things. Is Come on, the friend, the father is all-knowing. He knows everything. He has a plan B. Come on, Adam, he knew, he already knew there was a possibility of you falling. So there was a lamb that was already slain, a lamb that was already slain from before the foundations. He has a plan B. So the, the, what you are supposed to do is sit in that place of fellowship and wait for him to come and you say, Father, I messed up again. Please, please change my diapers. I messed up. Please change my diapers. And then he will tell you there is a plan B. But the thing is that most often we, we try to act all righteous and all knowing and and then you go to God and what you think is a prayer life is, is actually a life of complaint. You go to God after you have complained all day, you then enter your place of prayer and you start complaining to God. Say, when is my life going to change? How come I, you are looking at me like this? Don't you see that I'm getting old? Don't you see that my biological clock is ticking? Oh, menopause is at the side. How come, how long will I be single? How long will I be this? And God is saying, but listen to me. I have a plan for you. Let me tell you where you are supposed to meet your boss. And you are just there complaining. Imagine Ruth praying the kind of prayers we pray all sometimes. And, and Ruth is crying to God and saying, you gave me Marlon as a husband. Why did you let me marry if you were going to take away the husband anyway? So, so, so this is me. I'm young now and I'm a widow now. Are you satisfied? Are you happy? No, no, no. Sometimes we go to God and what we call prayer is actually another dimension of complaints. You are just complaining. It's not like you went to God with a consciousness. No, when I go, when the moment I realize that God has everything that it takes and one word from him can change my life. Just one word from God can change your life. Just one word from God can change your destiny. Just one word from God. So it doesn't matter how much you have to tell him. What you have to tell God is not as important as what he has to tell you. So I go before him and I begin to worship. I begin to stay up the anointing. I begin to cry out to him. I begin to say, Lord, this is your sacrifice. Father, you know, it doesn't matter how hard things are. But Father, you know I'm wasted. You want to waste this destiny, waste it, Lord. Father, I, when I took this step to serve you, I don't have any plan B. This is all of me. I come before you. Yes, I'm going through these difficulties. But Father, I am here before you. That's why I used to, I, I, I love this song so much. I've been offered to a deity. And now I'm a sacrifice. This life that I live is not my own. I've been offered to a deity, and now I'm a sacrifice. 
This life that I live is no longer my own. I've been offered to a deity, and now I'm a sacrifice. And this life that I live is not my own. Oh, spirit, consume more, oh, consume, consume me more and more. As I consume more, consume, consume you more and more. I've been offered to a deity. Oh, I've been offered to you, my deity. Lord, and now I'm your sacrifice. And this life that I live is not my own. Because you are the fire. And I am your sacrifice. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. You are the fire. And I am your sacrifice. Take over me. Overwhelm me, Lord. You are the fire. Honoring is your sacrifice. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Kayana balara sobraha. You are the fire. And I am your sacrifice. Take over me. Overwhelm me, Lord. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, just worship God for a moment. My sacrifice is calling you. Oh, God, my hunger is calling you. Oh, God, my worship is calling you. Oh, God, oh, speak from the heavens so I'll hear you from the earth. Lord, please speak from the heavens so I'll hear you from the earth as my prayers is calling you. Oh God, as my hunger is calling you. Oh God, even my confusion is calling you. Oh God, break forth from within me so they hear you in this life. Lord, break forth from within me so they hear you in this life. As my hunger is calling you, oh God, as my hunger is calling you, oh God, as my sacrifice is calling you, oh God, as this altar is calling you, oh God, I never go to God in the volume of my needs, I go to God wasted, that's why every time I pray, I break, every time I pray, I cry, every time I pray, some <laughs> sometimes my little girl will come to me, I, 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 when she when she hears me praying, she just comes with tissue, and she gives me. She says, "Mama, don't cry," because she knows when I when I I am not strong before God. The problem is that sometimes we enter the prayer. It's in the presence of God where we are showing our strength. No, I will be strong on uh, during the live session. I will be strong outside to everyone. I will be strong, and none of you will detect what I'm going through. But when I get into my place of prayer, that's where I fall flat before Him, and I begin to cry out to Him. I am not crying, putting my 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 request before. No, I'm crying and saying. After everything, this is me. Lord, this is me. Lord, this is me. I'm desperate for you. You know where I am right now. I need it's, it's either you step in or you step in. But I don't have any plan B. You know this life has been sold out for you. You know this woman has been sold out for you. My marriage has been sold out for you. My family has been sold out for you. So, Father, it's either you fix it or you fix it. If you decide to let it bad, to let it get bad, I, it's okay. But, Lord, I don't have any plan B. I, I am just here to worship you. I'm just here to worship you. So, I just come to him like the one you saved has come to worship you. Jesus, the one you saved 
has come to worship you. And then when I do that, I give myself. When the anointing has been stayed, I, 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 I will leave that place with the word. I will leave the highest directions I've had about my destiny came during such times. Oh no, I am an intercessor. I know when, when I need to get in the presence of God and say, Father, Monica is in need. God, please arise and show up for Monica. She needs this and this and this. Lord, this marriage has got to stand. Father, this person cannot lose their partner. Father, this marriage will not break. I know when to differentiate, but I'm talking about my personal prayer life. When I understand that he is my father and he's my friend, I don't go to him in the volume of my needs. I enter into his presence mostly with worship. And guess what? As I'm just loving on him, just telling him how I can't do without him, appreciating him for all the things that he has done, he begins to tell me what's wrong with my life. He begins to tell me the wrong decisions I made. He begins to tell me the direction to take. He begins to give me ideas. That's how I conceived an idea and started a company. I wasn't asking for, for, for a company. I wasn't even praying for an idea. He begins to because every time there is intimacy, your, 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 your partner, your friend or your partner, whoever you are intimate with, they, 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 they stirs up the love and they want to just do something for you. They want to just do something for you. Most of the prayers I've had answered, I didn't go to God in prayers. I went seeking God and then he began, that's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto him, or, or, unto you. The problem is that we are busy seeking the finances. After you seek it all day during war, when you enter your place of prayer, you continue seeking finances. And God is saying, come on, you've had the whole day seeking finances. And now that you're here, you just came to talk about more money. Come on, I've been waiting for you. You kept me standing here for one full day, for the past five hours. Our, our, we, we were supposed to have a date at three o'clock. And you're coming back at five o'clock saying you overstayed at your job site. But then you come back and you're telling me more about your job. Like, come on. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. All other things, when you begin to seek God, the things that you seek begin to follow you. But when you begin to seek things and you leave God, you will keep on continuing to seek those things because you, you are the one now following the things. But that was not the initial equation. That was not the way the things were supposed to be. I think we've carried on this point long enough, but it was that necessary. That when, when God is your friend, you prioritize him. This, this point is connected to what we are talking about. You will make time for him. You prioritize him. You have time for your job. You have time for your laundry. You have time to cook. You have time to even go out on a date with your boyfriend or your fiance or your husband. You have time for your family. But you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to spend with God. You have time to do everything, but you don't have time to go to church. You have time for everything, but you don't have time to, to study the word. He cannot be your friend and he is not in your program, in your agenda. You prioritize him. We all want to spend some time with our friends. Even if they are out of town, you, you spend time talking to them on phone. Are we together? Oh, another area. Wherever there is friendship, there is giving. Wherever. Oh, thank you, Kala. Thank you. Is it Kela or Kala? Thank you, Kela. Wherever. Oh, thank you, Pastor Rich. Come on, you see why I miss Pastor Rich when he's not there. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Rich. Wherever there is friendship, there is giving. If your friend is in need, you will stretch yourself. You better miss a meal to make sure that their need is met, if that is a genuine friendship. Okay, Carla. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Carla, thank you. Thank you for that correction. There is a way you give to God. <laughs> Come on, 
come on, come on, ladies. I have many ladies here. Is there someone you love, not because they, not because you love them at first sight, but they so lavish you with gifts that you just fell in love with them. They so treated you so well. They were so generous with you that you found yourself loving them. You just found yourself loving them. There is no friendship without giving. God so loved the world that he gave. There is no friendship without giving. And giving is not like you give your leftovers. For two days, you then call your friend, say there is some food in the house. No. If they are truly your friend, <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. If they are truly your friend. Oh, thank you, Nisha. Oh, you guys are just simply amazing. Even in heaven, we will have our own congregation. I will tell God, I came with my congregation. No, let no one steal my members. <laughs> You guys are just the best family. Thank you so much. You make this preaching easier. You make it enjoyable. I can sweat without feeling it. <laughs> there is there is no friendship without giving. There is no friendship without sacrifice. The reason why they are your friend is because they will do for you what any other person would not do. Come on, if, 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 if the person you call your friend, is, if their number is not an emergency number, if it is not your 991 or 19... What is that? What is that your emergency number again? 911. It's 911, right? If it's not a 911 number, that way every time when you are stranded, you know if I can just reach to this, my friend, I will have 911, thank you, Pastor Rich. If I can just reach to this, reach out to this, my friend, you know I will have a way out. A friend is that kind of, that kind of reliable, they sacrifice for you without thinking. They sa if there is no sacrificial giving, not just giving, yes, giving of finances when you are in need, you cannot be hungry and your friend is eating well. Or your friend cannot be hungry and you are eating and to your satisfaction. No, it's better you call them and when, when I'm preparing my best meal or when I'm preparing what my friend loves, as I just think of preparing it, I already send them a message. Say, please make room for, for, for time to come and eat. Today I'm cooking this. And the food doesn't taste well until I've shared with them. Yes, friends help each other. Friends help each other. Friends are there for each other. So the giving here is not just limited to finances. But if, if, if you consider me my friend, I beg, please give me money too. <laughs> but it's, it's talking about giving your time. Sometimes they just need someone to listen to them. Sometimes I get to the place of prayer, not because I, not, not, not really like I want to pray. But I just want the Holy Spirit to, I, I enter, there are times I enter and I pull the chair and I say, Holy Spirit, sit down here. Sit down here, let's talk. There are some things that are bothering me. I need for someone to hear me, but I can't share it with any other person. Another thing you should learn, don't, don't, don't share your things with people who cannot help you. Cultivate the habit of making God your friend. It, it will help you a great deal. It will keep you away from trouble. Some of us find ourselves in messes because we shared our stories with people who were ready to take it out and go laugh at us behind our backs. Cultivate Make the Holy Spirit your friend. You can tell him absolutely anything. I tell him everything. Sometimes I just enter and I pull a chair and say, sit down here, let's talk. Let's talk. I went through this and this and this and this. Say, please, I don't know what to do right now. I messed up here. Don't go sharing your things with people who will use it against you. Let the Holy Spirit be your number one friend. So sometimes when I, when I talk of giving and sacrificial giving, it's not just giving money. I'm talking also of giving your time, giving your advice, giving your love and affection. Sometimes you just need someone to hear you out. 
sometimes it's not like you really need for them to even tell you anything you just need someone to, you just have something that you need to take off your chest don't give me any advice just listen to me don't know what i should do but at least hear me out let me just air my mind let me just talk to someone so there is no friendship without giving without sacrificing and talking coming back now to your friendship with god when God says that ministry project, you have got to sow a seed. There is, there is need for, for his house to be built. That should be your business. You should make sure that your, your, your bags of cement are there. No, there should be a pillar. There should be something in that house that, that, that was given by you. Very true, Nisha. So when God says he is in need, when God says his servant is in need, you have got to say, no, I will do what I can, I can sacrifice to make sure God's servant is okay. So you do for your friends what they cannot do for you, for themselves, if you are in, in the position to do it. So you give to God willingly. You give not grudgingly, willingly. You are happy to do it because you know you are doing it for your friend. When he says, when he tells you, you've got to spend time I need, to, I need you to win souls for me. You do it happily because you are doing it for your friends. That is what will give your friends satisfaction. Come on, the Bible says when a soul is won, there is joy, there is celebration in heaven. You want your friend to be continuously throwing parties. You want to give them reason to jubilate, reason to throw a party. Isn't that that's something your friend will love? This is, a, this is an instruction to someone. So you've got to go out and evangelize to someone because you know that will make your friend so happy. When they tell you I need for you, please make out some time. You will sacrifice, despite the fact that your schedule is tight, you will sacrifice time. You will sacrifice some time to spend with them. Because you know that, that if you do that, they are going to be happy. And you are happy doing that because you know you are doing something good for your friend. Come on, I can spend all that I have to prepare a meal that I know my husband, who is my best friend, will eat and be satisfied. I know it is best meal, so I will lavish it with every obstacle that is that, that I can afford. I want to do it just the way that, I, that, that, he will, that he will be happy. When he goes out and is coming back, I want to spoil him. No, sometimes I tell him, I know you are going through a hard time financially. You can't just go out empty-handed. No, I will take the last that I have and I, and I give him. And I said, no, just don't go out empty hand. It's not good for a man to go out like that. Do I do that because I had I, I had surplus? No, because I want him to be happy. I don't want him to go out. Maybe he can go out. Maybe the fuel gets finished from the car and he's stuck somewhere. No, no, no. He shouldn't be embarrassed somewhere. So I would I, I would rather take my last and give it to him. Not because I love being empty handed. Because that's what a friend is supposed to do. If you are the friend of God, you know how to sacrifice, to give sacrificially. And you know what? This friend we are talking about, you can never beat God at giving. No matter what you are giving, you can never beat God at giving. So the moment you make him happy, what he does back for you. Come on, Solomon offered a sacrifice, built a temple, offered a sacrifice, and God came down. God says, no, this is too much. I cannot stay in heaven after this sacrifice. He came down and he asked Solomon, say, what do you want me to do for you? God, Solomon says, give me wisdom. God, he says, I will not only give you wisdom. I will make you the richest man that ever walked the earth. Until tomorrow, Solomon remains the richest. You cannot give to, 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 to him. He is not ungrateful. He's not like some of our earthly friends that we have who are ungrateful. They keep receiving and receiving and never giving back. No, he is not ungrateful. And it's not like some of the friends that we have who are like liabilities. Every time you have helped them until you don't have the ability to help them again. Every time you see their call, you know they need something and you are looking for a way to avoid them. No, he's not like that. No, this one, if you help them, you are doing your own destiny a favor because he is way better off than you. He can give you a hundredfold of what you gave him back. So there is an assurance that when you do for him what he cannot do for himself, he will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Oh, when you are a friend of God, 
you automatically become an intercessor. We already saw Abraham. Abraham was not even the best intercessor. He didn't even know how to pray. He started by telling God, so if you see 50, 50 righteous people in Sodom, would you still destroy the land? God says, no, I will not destroy. Of course, there are not up to 50 righteous people there. So he didn't even know how to pray the right way. But when you are a friend of God, God will get past your inconsistencies. He will get past your weaknesses. He will get past your shortcomings. And he will just attend to you. God will ignore your shortcomings. He doesn't even look at it like a shortcoming. No, he's on a haste to go accomplish a purpose. But he has the time to sit and listen to you pray nonsense prayers. So if I see 40, if you see 45 people there, will you still destroy? He says no. So if you see 30 people, will you still destroy? Say, please don't be angry or don't be angry. Please a, a bit more time. If you see 35 people, if you see 20 people, if you and he was like, no. You automatically become an intercessor. You have the right to intervene the, the, the plans of God. No, you have the right to step in and say, God, I don't like the way Pastor Richie's life is going. I don't like the way Sissy's life is going. Father, Lini has been believing you for this marriage for so long. Father, please. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just talking on behalf of someone. I'm interceding for someone. Lord, I, I want you to, to look in the direction of Sherry Johnson. Father, please, don't, don't pass Calabai. Don't pass Sabai. Don't pass... Father, please, please attend to her. Answer this prayer point. Say, don't you think if you allow Nisha to keep on praying out, praying, praying to you and not having answers, don't you think people are going to say her God is, is, is not powerful enough? Say, Father, please do what Tiffany wants you to do. Come on, come on, come on. Who am I praying for? Kayana Bara Sobrahanda. You become an intercessor. When you are a friend of God, you become an intercessor. Oh, boss mass, I didn't see when you joined us, boss mass, you are welcome. You are welcome. So, so I can boldly come before God and say, Father, don't you see that boss mass has been believing you for a reconnection with, 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 with the daughter? Could, could, is it okay? Please just do that. You will be very happy. Come on, that's your child. Come on, that's your child. You are, you are, remember, you are a heavenly father. You can talk to him. You can talk to him one on one. Moses called God to his senses. Moses told God, that, say, don't you think? How can you just be quiet? How can you just say you want to destroy these people. I know you're angry, but doesn't mean you should destroy them. You're angry, but calm down. Be calming down. Oh, Father, take one man. Take one take, take one bottle. Take one bottle of cool juice and be calming down. You cannot destroy these people. You are the one that brought them out. You cannot turn around and destroy them. Oh, where are those my new people? Kayana Balarasiana. You automatically become an intercessor. You automatically become an intercessor. You are appearing to God and you are telling God, you, you enter the place of prayer and you are telling God, please don't you think this. Don't you think, don't you think Monica needs a new car by now? Father, don't you think pure Sire needs a car? Don't you think she needs to be restored? Father, she has been going through this dry season for so long. Father, don't you think it is just okay? Come on, what you, you are, you are the good father. You are above the limitations of our earthly fathers. You are above the limitations of the fathers that we have here. Don't you think that her financial dry season her, is tiring too much? Father, you will not kill the daughter of Zion. She is your daughter. Have mercy. Have mercy. So I begin to talk for you. I begin, that's why what I do most often because I know I am an intercessor. I know I am an intercessor. So I don't pray. I, I was talking about yesterday. I uploaded a video and I just saw that the video was doing well. And I didn't know I was praying. As I just started telling God, thank you for this channel. Father, thank you that finally this channel is having a breakthrough. Thank you for each and everyone. I, I didn't know when I got, I, I, I started to say, I knew Lord that you were almighty. I knew you could change things around. You could turn things around. I know you you, you could turn around. I know there, there was a day like this coming. Father, I thank you. I worship you. Father, thank you for each and everyone. Thank you because this is just you showing yourself strong and showing yourself present in, in purpose and marital bliss. So thank you because Lord Pastor Rich's book is about to go viral. Thank you because you are giving him wonderful ideas. Father, thank you because everything Monica's hospital is going to 
come to life. Thank you because Sherry, Sherry Johnson's business is coming to life. You are connecting her to the right people. Thank you, Lord, because you are giving Lini her kingdom stuff. Thank you because Boss Mass is meeting their daughter. Boss Mass is being reconnected. Thank you because you are healing Camille. Thank you because you are restoring her. Thank you, Lord, because you are restoring every part of our body, every organ that is malfunctioning. Thank you because you are blessing all those that need to be blessed. Thank you. That's how I begin to intercede. Because I know that I am, I, 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 so I don't go in like I need to go in. I wasn't know I was still in the business of, of, of uploading my videos. I was still in the business, but I talk to my friend anytime. I can, I, I, the, the moment I feel like I can stand in the gap for anyone anytime. Because he's my friend. I'm going to the market and I'm talking to him about someone. I, when I'm walking, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. If God brings you to my mind, I talk to him about you. If God brings him, Father, don't you think Katie has been away for, Father, restore her health. Restore her health. Father, restore John's marriage. Bring her prodigal back. So sometimes you feel like you're giving me a prayer point and it was just for that session. No, I record it. I pray for you after. I intercede for you after. And I tell God I will not stop. Say, Father, you better do it now. If you don't do it now, you do it tomorrow. If you don't do it now, you do it tomorrow. Because the Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord. He says, give him no rest and give yourself no rest until he restores Jerusalem. So God, I tell him, I say, Father, if you don't do it today, you do it tomorrow. Because I will not give you rest. As long as I'm with you, as long as you, receive, you remain my father and I'm your friend, I will not give you rest until I see these testimonies happen. I will not give you rest until I see these promises fulfilled. I will not give you rest until these prophecies are fulfilled. When you are a friend of God, you become. Amen. Amen. Amen, Nisha. Amen. Amen, Sherry. Amen. Kayana Balaru Shaka. Oh, amen, Line. Thank you guys so much. I talk to him anytime. Anytime. My children just understand. They know I can be cooking and then before I know it, they, they know it at blasting tongues. I've begun to call people's names. Because when you are a friend of God, you have the privilege to relate with him anytime, every time. You have the privilege to talk to him at any point in time. I don't need a prayer time. If I needed a prayer time, it would even be a mess. Because there's one little man in my life in the name of Ebenezer, my baby. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Nisha. There's one little guy that is seemingly controlling my life. So if I say my prayer time is 4 a.m., 4 a.m. is when I wake up and he wants to eat instead. So I, I, I was telling us that prayer time is good. It's good to have a prayer time because it's good to build a consistency with your work with God. But then, it's better to have a prayer habit. You can have a prayer time and you pray one hour. I can have a prayer habit and I pray five, five minutes all throughout the day. At the end of the day, I've prayed three hours. And then God is alert and active when it comes to me. Because he knows I might have anyone, I might be talking to him about anything. So I'm conscious of the fact that he is there with me. So this will not, this will not work until you are conscious of the presence of God. You know with beyond doubt that the Holy Spirit is there with you. You are conscious of his presence everywhere you go. You are conscious of his presence in everything you do. You know he is there with you. As I'm cooking, I'm there with him. As, as I'm cooking, I'm there with him. I'm doing chores, I'm there with him. Yes, Carla. You cannot de be dependent on a prayer time. Your baby will mess up that prayer time. Your baby will mess that up. So have a prayer habit. The least five minutes you have talked to him. Besides, after all, he's your friend. Every time your friend says hi, it's a good time. Oh, I have a friend. Oh, just, just, just a one voice note. We end up talking for at least an hour. If she calls me to just ask a question, we end up talking for at least an hour. So sometimes I've, come on, come on. When I was still doing my designing, my interior designing, and sometimes I would want to cut some, some, some blind designs, and I don't know, I, I, I would see a design maybe online, and I just love it, but I don't know how to sew it. 
and I don't know how to sew it. All I need to do is take my fabric, I put it on the table, I stand there, I hold my scissors, I hold my measuring tape, and I say, Holy Spirit, we are here. Come on, teach me. Shabi, your Bible says you, you teach us all things, and you bring to our remembrance all that we have learned. The daughter of Zion, your friend needs help right now. Teach me. And you know what used to happen to me? Sometimes I would sleep and I would dream, cutting that fabric, cut, cutting that blind design and sewing it. And I'll wake up in the morning, I'll tell my husband, I know how to sew that thing. And my husband would be amazed. Guess what? All I need is fabric. I will sew it and it will come out excellent. The reason why you are stuck is because you have not considered him your friend. You see that thing you have been struggling about? That idea you have been struggling about, he will gossip it to you. Oh, oh, there is no better way to gossip than with the Holy Spirit. He's a better gossip partner. Gossiping with him is not sin. So rather than going to gossip with that friend that puts you in trouble, because they take it and they take it back to the person you talked about. <laughs> gossip with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You will never go wrong. You will never be, be in sin. You will never go wrong. When he's your friend, you have the right. The door is ever open for you to step in. The door is open. You have access. You have access any time of the day. You have access any time of the day. His ears are open. Even when he's busy. Have you, have you guys noticed that when, when someone tells you I was busy, on social media it doesn't mean they were busy to everyone right oh you can so gossip with him and he will give you gist that you know oh, the holy spirit can be such a good gist master they'll give you gist that you didn't know about they will, they will gist you on the latest business that is about to prosper the latest thing that is about to blow and they'll, and, and, and they'll even gossip to you and tell you the person who is working on the project behind bars. And they'll create a be behind closed doors, sorry. And they'll create a connection. Say, I know, I even know who you can get to, to, to connect you to that person. And that person doesn't know how you got connected to them. They don't know that there was a gist master. <laughs> the gist master just led you in on the next big idea. He just led you in on the next big, big idea. He just overheard your enemies plotting against you and he comes to you and he says, there's something cooking behind the scenes. They don't know that I heard them, but they, they, they forgot that I'm all knowing. And they don't, maybe they don't know I'm your friend. He said, but I said, let me rush and tell you. So, so, and so a person, they are plotting against you. They want to get you at this. They want to destroy your marriage. Ha! No, no, no. I, I, I love it when, when, when he begins to gossip to the mom about the child. And, and your child comes home later and, and you ask, where have you been? And they, and they say, we, we, I, I went for a meeting in church. And the Holy Spirit tells you, he's lying. He's lying. He was out with the, with the wrong company again. They were drinking alcohol. And, 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 and if you have grown so much to, to, to know how to operate his gifts, sometimes when, when, when the Spirit of God says that, he will carry you from there and you are standing right there, seeing he, he will carry you back to where he's coming from. And you tell him you are lying to me. And he says, no, mom, I'm not lying. And you say, no, because I see you seated around a table and you are, and you are drinking this particular beer and a, a bottle of alcohol and you are there with four, with four friends. And one of your friends is even smoking. I thought I asked you not to hang out with, oh, who is this I see here? I thought I even asked you and, and they're like, how did you get to know that? And, and, and the child that already understand will tell you, I hate that your Holy Spirit. He just will not allow me to enjoy my life. I hate your Holy Spirit. Oh, did we receive the word of God with gladness? He will tell you. The Holy Spirit will tell you things happening behind your back. Come on, my pastor has been poisoned. He has entered places several times where they, they served him food that had poison. And the Holy Spirit tells him, don't, don't eat. This food has been poisoned. He will carry gossip to you. They did it behind your back. That was my prophetic word some time ago. Say they plant it behind your back, but in his presence. They didn't know how close he was to you. They will receive the word of God with gladness. 
Did I preach good for someone? Because I feel like I preach good. <laughs> please don't tell me I was fooling myself. Please, please be nice to the woman of God. She's fragile. <laughs> Did you receive the word of God with gladness? Just begin to thank God. We are way out of time. We always go out of time. My mouth, I, I don't know how to keep to time. I tell myself today is 40 minutes before I know it. <laughs> it's getting to 1 hour 30 minutes. Come on. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rich. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sherry Johnson. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kala. Thank you. <laughs> okay, why? Thank you, Lini. Thank you for that advice. Okay, don't just tell me I preach good. Now it's offering time. Offering time, sowing time. You have just one to two minutes for that. If you have an offering, you have a seed, you just want to bless the woman of God. If you are late... I'm, I'm giving us just one to two minutes. Actually, just one minute. Just one minute. My cash up and PayPal are pinned. That blue place, they are pinned. Oh, thank you, Nisha. Thank you. You're such a darling. Do, do you know I get tense every time I sit here? Like, are these people going to be blessed? Father, are you going to use me to bless them? Let me not waste somebody's time and data. Lord, please use someone, bless someone through me. I'm always nervous when I see there. Don't mind because I shout like this, as if I came up with all confidence. And guess what? There are some days I sit here and I don't know what to say. And I just tell my, my favorite prayer, Holy Spirit, when I open my mouth, feel it. And then he does his job through me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Where are the seeds? Where are the seeds? Where are the people sowing? Family, please don't. Did you hear? Am I your friend? Giving was one of the one of the, the the friend things. Hey, Pastor Rich, God bless you, Monica. God bless you. God bless you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Each and everyone who just sold a seat on Cash App on PayPal. Oh. No, it's okay, Nisha. Your presence is more than enough. Your presence is, um, is more than enough. Come on, it is God that gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. If God wants you to sow, he will give you a seed to sow. So don't never, never bother about that. Don't mind this my mouth. Don't mind what I say. It's very okay. Now, what, what you need to do for me to, for free is if you have not given the video a thumbs up, you can do that for me. It's very okay. It's very okay if you didn't sow or if you don't have, even if you have and you are not, if you are not late to sow, it's still okay. If you don't feel like giving an offering, it's still very fine. It's not obligatory. The Bible says, do it willingly, not like you were forced. So it's not, it's not obligatory. It's not compulsory. That one day is coming, Nesha. That one day is coming. God bless you all for your seed. God bless you all for those who sow seeds, for your offering. May the Lord bless your giving. May God provide for you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. May God meet you at the point of your need by connecting you to your seed. May your expectations not be cut off in the name of Jesus. May God grant to you everything that you desire, just the same way that a friend, a loving friend, May God do for you what a loving friend would do for, your be for their best friend. Wow, you are a single mom. Wow. That shouldn't be easy. It is well. May God make provision for you in the mighty name of Jesus. May God give you financial open doors. May finances come to you from places that you don't even realize, that you didn't plan. May your finances not be a result of your work. But may God pour to you, to your coffers every now and then. Before there is a need, before your baby, before your baby needs is in need, or before your child is in need, may God make provision in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. God bless you guys. I've overstayed. Bye-bye. 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 I love you all. See you tomorrow. Ma. Yes, baby.